Welcome to Awakened Titans Podcast with Lily Patrescu. Mind-blowing conversations with influential business titans sharing how you can manifest abundance, love, joy, success through quantum awakening, quantum manifestation, quantum healing, quantum miracles, exponential business growth, and innovative products and services. Discover how to become limitless in this amazing session with Tahira Amir Khan. Now, Tahira founded the Through the Golden Door Eco Societies and New Human Program in order to help leaders tap into their limitless potential so they can build eco societies that are self sustainable with sacred geometry and sustainable agriculture so they can stretch their minds to what is possible. And she's doing that in so many different countries, in South Sudan, in Pakistan, in Malaysia, in so many different countries. And her intention is to create societies of trust, value, and empowerment. Now, she comes from a family of Afghan royalty and freedom fighters called the Imperial Sardozai Empire. Uh, uh, sorry, called the Imperial Sardozai Tribe. And um, as a trained mathematician and renowned polymath with 20 years in technology and author of the award-winning book Through the Golden Door, Tahira was the former president of Singapore's Mobile Alliance. And in 2014, she shifted her focus from technology of the world to the upgrade of the human technology. And she envisions a world where every child has access to quality education and safe, nurturing, and healthy environments. And she established the Through the Golden Door initiative dedicated to making this vision a reality by rebuilding communities torn apart by poverty and conflict into thriving, sustainable havens where local leaders champion the values of trust that uplift communities for future generations. Thank you so much, Tahira. The first question is, what's the biggest secret to your success? Oh, the biggest secret, I would say um, the, the biggest reason, and I don't know whether it's a secret, really is persistence and belief in oneself and belief in the people who I bring on board, the faith the faith in myself and that faith in them. Um, the, the faith has been my greatest, uh, I would say, um, the point that has allowed me to keep going because even when you're creating something like this, equal societies, literally rebuilding from scratch, um, it, it, it is such an, a huge endeavor. And you're dealing with so many people, especially when you're dealing in Africa, uh, poverty-struck countries, war-torn countries, and across borders, remotely. It takes a lot of faith because you're dealing with a lot of unknowns. And it's a very organic, long-term process. You have to literally keep going and going. And uh, there's such a um, variety and different kind of people I'm dealing with all the time of such diff vast backgrounds that I have to learn to develop faith and trust in them. It, it, it's not something which um, you, you can't build that relationship easily if you don't have a certain level of trust. So um, that's one, one, one uh, very important thing is trusting relationships. Because I don't, it would be very, very difficult otherwise to build this. Um, Eco societies of trust, which has become the vision of this project, as I realized. So that's the secret, I would say. Thank you. And what's your blueprint to becoming an awakened business titan? Persistence, <laughs> embracing failure, because I have had many failures, and uh, repeating and repeating and taking a slightly better solution <laughs> approach so that I can beat those failures and not fail again, but keep fixing. When we started the Eco Societies Initiative, I'll tell you, we failed. Uh, we started first with Ghana with a different approach. Where we, I actually brought my whole team there. We raised a lot of money, but we found that uh, 
uh, that was not the right approach. We had to approach a decentralized model. We had to work with the people and delegate as much as possible instead of us foreigners going in. And also we had to work, we had to be very, very, use a lot of discretion and use and appoint egoless, selfless individuals. It's not easy to find that, but we had to go and do that. So learning the better approach and keep trying so that we succeed. Embracing the unknown, uh, being very clear about the vision and actually visualizing. I, I practice a lot of uh, visualization exercises. So I envision <laughs> the society building up. I envision the right leaders coming on board so that we can train them. So practicing the power visualization and imagining that we've already achieved it, that we've reached the destination. And the destination can take a really long path. It could be a very curved path. Many times it's not a straight path. But knowing the destination is there and it's going to be achieved, that's most important. The time it takes is literally less important. So I would learn to let go of time that, you know, it needs to be done by six months. It needs to be done by one year. That's something which is a bit elastic. <laughs> but achieving that um, regardless and visualizing uh, the success, I think visualizing the success, faith in the vision. Um, and also for me, I'm very much spirit-led. So I allow myself, to, as, a, as a trained mathematician, as you shared, um, I, had to, I was very logical. But the conscious mind is very logical. I realized that I had to top, tap onto the quantum. The quantum is sort of illogical. <laughs> it is unknown. It is uh, something you have to allow yourself to be spirit-led. Uh, we are body, mind, soul, and spirit. So the spirit sometimes reveals something that I was told, like, you need to start in this place. And I don't have the reasoning for it. Intuition, gut. So not everything is based on facts and realizing on that gray area of intuition and taking a decision based on that. That is something I had to learn. And I do that every day now. Thank you. And what uh, did you do to become a Titan? How did you start your journey? Break down to break through. <laughs> letting go. Letting go of the old uh, I was a very much a technologist. Uh, I was involved with the building of smart cities, um, working on frameworks, for example, Vietnam and then Singapore. Um, and my realization when I stepped out of that, I had to learn to let go of that because I knew there was something bigger, something more important that I was supposed to do. Not I, but with others. And um, a titan is fearless. <laughs> so when you spend so many years of your life, 20 years doing something in corporate, and then you decide to step out, it's a very frightening thing because you're no longer having your earnings anymore. The safety net is removed. So a titan uh, is fearless and is certain in the uncertain. This means you know that you would make it happen. But you have an idea of the vision and you just find a way to go towards it. So, um, yeah, certainty in the, un the uncertain, <laughs> I would say that was a help. Be willing to press the restart button. Thank you. And which experience awakened your drive to achieve success and make a difference? Which particular experience? Hmm. Um, I think there have been, there've been a number of these experiences, but when I realized I was no longer aligned with my true self, um, when I was at the as president of the Mobile Alliance, uh, as a society, we had to look at making Mo Singapore the mobile innovation hub for Asia. But it was still a society where to look at the social aspects. But when I found that we were pressed to just sell technology and sell as many devices and mobile solutions. 
and I suggested to my committee that we had to go back to the social benefits and the social health. So I raised the matter, we need to still think about the society. And when one of them tried to turn against me and say, no, it's, it's about numbers, it's about finance. When I, then I, that's when I knew that I was not in alignment. And I said, I'm not going to sell my soul for this. I'm not here to sell lots of devices. I'm here to build a society. So that's when I decided to step out and remember to be aligned to myself, my true self, and have an acceptance of who I am without me, um, feeling that I was not uh, good enough or that I was uh, not doing the right thing. So accepting who we are and uh, going back to loving ourselves. Thank you. And, and how did you awaken to your true power? Awakening happens to the breakdown that I shared. Um, it's when I started questioning. I think it's it's important to question everything, to question ourselves. Uh, when we don't do that, we don't awaken. So, um, and feeling. I allowed myself to start to feel because otherwise we become numb to what's happening with our work. We can just be numb and just go day to day with life. But I started feeling and I could feel myself of that feeling unhappy with who I was. And that was when I started developing awareness. And that's when I started awakening because I allowed that part of me to arise, that giant, as uh, Tony Robbins would say, that giant to arise. Thank you. And how did your awakening lead to changing your business strategy? Why did you choose, for example, to help leaders? Why not children? Why not single mothers? Why not, I don't know, to work in construction? What was the thing that kind of said to you, okay, this is my path? Because I was a leader myself. Because I was taking that path of building. I was in that path. And I was lost. So I was seeing others as a mirror of myself. And I knew that best. So I said, if the world had many leaders out there had a realization vision as I had, I could impart that knowledge, impart that expertise. And that's most authentic because I have been on that journey. Thank you. And why was it important to you to, to do that? Because I was in it and I saw how um, being untruthful and um, not being authentic had repercussions on society. I saw how the deception, because I had seen deception and I had to be silent about it, I saw the impact on society. And I thought, if I work with potential leaders, not exactly, they don't have to be leaders yet, but potential leaders and leaders, it would have a huge impact. One person can impact a million or more. Thank you. And tell us about your program, the New Human Program and uh, Through the Golden Door Eco Societies. How does it work? Okay. So Through the Golden Door uh, Eco Societies, Through the Golden Door is actually the name of my book, which is the doorway to our advancement. And the Eco Societies, I spoke about uh, in the book, is really the new societies, the new advanced societies, which allows for the evolution of humans. We are in a world where technology is probably advancing faster, AI, than the human evolution. AI is moving with leaps and bounds. Are we catching up in our human evolution? I hope so, but we need to be ahead. So that was the objective as I built the leaders to build their societies. And the new human program is a training program which I personally conduct 
to any individual leaders, potential leaders who would like to upgrade themselves. I see the human as a technology because uh, the DNA, there's such, there's so much that we don't understand about our DNA that um, it is a powerful technology and our heart um, and the cells in our body. Uh, we have about 50 trillion cells in our body and every cell has a potential energy of 0 0.7 volts, you know, and with 50 trillion cells is such a huge potential that we carry. So the human technology upgrade is a sort of a scientific spiritual transformation program. So this is separate, two different things. One is working on upgrading societies, okay? And the other one is actually the upgrade of the human being, human evolution. So I, I look at two things. Okay. And what, um, can you give us three key things that you're teaching in these programs that are different um, or better than what's already existing out there? Okay, so the new human program is a training program. Okay, so what I teach in this new human program is um, scientific and uh, theory, okay, understanding about human evolution, understanding about who we are and what we are, realizing our true potential because we have forgotten that understanding about our purpose, full clarity about purpose, understanding and discovering our, the big story in our lives, working with our body and tuning ourselves with our body and, uh, and our soul and spirit so that we can take ourselves to becoming this greater being. I, I run a sort of a quantum meditation, which is a, a very deep kind of meditation I have written about in my book, Through the Golden Door, which al allows you to unleash that quantum. And uh, which, as I said, there's a, such a great power within ourselves. And it's a very deep meditation practice. So it's a combination. Experience, experiential workshop, where we take I take them on a river of consciousness exercise when you discover where they are in their um, consciousness evolution and also what tasks they are, need to do on earth and where they are in their growth. So I would say it, it what's special about it is that it's a combination of science and spirituality and it's quite deep and experiential as much as possible. Thank you. And is there anything practical that you can share that the um, audience can implement right now? Is there anything at all that's really tiny exercise or anything that they can use uh, by themselves, the people that are watching and listening to us right now? Yeah, okay. So this is one exercise which I get my team, teams to practice as much as possible because ultimately... The success in our lives depends on our relationships, whether it's personal and uh, family and business relationships. So if you can build very good bonds of relationships, you are there's a very good chance that you'll be successful. The new human <laughs> has very long-term and very close bonds. Uh, it's almost a connection in the spirit. It's like, you know, uh, we have a... We have a um, plan that every leader has a co-leadership model. We always have two leaders and they're always supportive of each other. So there's this particular exercise which I teach called the bridge and island exercise, the meditation. So I invite my leaders to do that on their own with their co-leaders. So it happens in twos and threes. And each time they connect with each other with this meditative exercise, they discover the synergies with each other and how they can support each other. And they also find out what are the problem areas. So it builds on the communication between both of them or twos and threes. So when I started doing uh, uh, teaching my leaders, 
in the eco societies even and even with their communities they found that the trust was developed and in order to establish a successful business and a successful society strong bonds of trust can achieve anything no matter how difficult it is strong bonds of trust can build absolutely anything and that's where the limitlessness happens thank you so yeah would you i mean i can't show it right now because it'll take probably 15 20 minutes but this is an exercise we do thank you and what is your message your legacy message to the world my legacy message to the world is persistence repetition um keep doing and keep repeating because uh, like i said um when you keep moving forward and uh whether you're communicating some information with your leaders with anyone or you're sharing on social media you have to be persistent you can't just share something and then disappear so persistence is absolutely key key um and i always go back to faith um faith in the unknown because when you have faith in the unknown you can build big things because we don't realize when with our conscious mind we have an idea of this is what i'm going to do this is what i can do but when you tap onto the unconscious mind um the unknown cannot reveal itself so easily and that's many times that what you can do based on your greater self so we are all destined to do great things but that big thing we can do doesn't reveal itself so uh, readily it may come at a certain time it's not up front so we have to be ready with faith and then as we journey on to that path that great project or initiative or thing that you are meant to do will reveal itself at a certain time and you don't know when it's going to happen thank you and what's the fast track to become limitless aside from attending your your workshop or being mentored by you and uh, reading your book do you have any specific very practical examples of what someone can do to fast track um their path to become limitless okay it could be a brief awareness exercise and meditative exercise one awareness exercise which i also teach to my leaders is inviting them to check in okay they check in and as they take themselves out of what's happening and they check in and be present so they check in and how they what are they sensing what are they feeling and um whether they are fully present so i invite them to check in multiple times a day to take themselves back to being present so that they can assess why they react in certain way why did they uh do certain things what i did and this morning why did i do that so when you constantly question yourself when you check in then you realize i think i shouldn't have said that i shouldn't have behaved that way then you can correct it immediately before the time passes on so that allows us because when you're checking in you take yourself to the higher self and the higher self is limitless so the check in process daily thank you so what i'm getting is that you need to be present fully present with people around you and be mindful of your actions to make sure that you become a better leader okay you can say that <laughs> follow us for more interviews with world's most influential business titans providing you with the insights to awaken to your full potential so you can get paid to be yourself find true happiness and manifest anything you desire